So back to the tiebreaker of round three. And well, this time I'm sure it's the last game to be played in round three because that's the so-called Armageddon game between Nepomneshi and Nakamura. And I wasn't quite sure. I thought Nakamura won the drawing of lots. So he was to pick the color. And that's a bit surprising. If it's true, then it's a bit surprising he picks black because, uh, well, most of the players would go with white in this case. Although, well, I'm still not sure. Maybe, maybe, maybe I just confuse it. Well, not a lot I can say <laughs> about the chances. I mean, it's all open, of course, and well, it's rather interesting what's going to happen. And Kings India, I uh, know, no, it's English. But <laughs> I just saw moves and Nakamura. It is sort of Kings India. Knight c6, rook b1, and then d5. No, e5 is the move. I, I guess there is d5 after rook b1, a tricky move, which is. Well, and was it the, was it the opening, yeah, from the second, uh, from the first blitz game where Nakamura actually lost. Knight goes to e7, a4, now bishop h3, changing the bishop, so that's, look, and Nakamura managed to calm his nerves and now, well, that's, that's where, uh, the <laughs> that's where he is at his best, although Jan Nepomnishi, of course, is a, uh, very strong blitz player himself, so as I said, nothing is clear. And so far we still can look at the position, but at some point it might be, might be actually the case that position won't be that important. Probably not with that guys, because they are capable of making a lot of moves. Actually, I don't know if we uh, speak about ratio like moves per second. It's not clear, but I believe they are capable of making a lot of moves, say, so there will not be a deadly time trouble. To remind you, the system of this so-called Armageddon game changed quite a bit, and now you do have an increment after move 60. Once you get to move 60, you cannot lose on time anymore. And so, well, so once again, Nipomnish is white, and according to the system, it's the only one game to be played. So if he's not winning, he's out, and otherwise, Nakamura is out. That. So, uh, well, quite an unusual, quite an unusual transformation of a of this structure. Well, what Nakamura does is is actually rather, rather strange. I mean, you change the light square bishop, and then you give all the possible light squares away, hoping for, I don't know what for actually, to get, to get some sort of an attack. Yes, that's what he does. Knight. Uh, well, obviously, a lot of lot of spectators. So if you it goes like this. I mean, if if you are to look at blitz, so this is the blitz game you want to look at. Mm, well, still, I would declare this one to be much better for Jan Nepomnishi now, position-wise. But it's still, still, of course, hard to hard to predict anything. And both of them look like calm. It's definitely it's a last battle for today. So, so the best you can do is just to forget what has happened previously and just play. So f5, breaking through. Breaking through, but at the same time giving, giving some squares. So now, what Nakamura can, uh, well, what Neposhi can do, he, he takes c5, then dc5. It's actually creating a lot of possible weakness. And a5 and b6 pawn, well, we don't see this b6 pawn, but just believe me, it gets weak, although maybe not under this time control, because after queen f6, queens are on, and, well, it's about, it's about trying to to get to Nepomnish's king. That's what Nakamura does. Perhaps Jan had to had to swap queens. I would I would say would be more practical decision because after queen f6, it's always chances for black. And obviously, I mean, if if it's not made, then Pepeto will be already enough. Knight e1 played by Jan Nepomnish. So f4. Then if you well. It feels like white can start taking. So, well, look, Nipomnishi, actually he's surprised with, with what's going on. And well, I guess he made another prophylactic move, although it was already, it seemed like it was already possible to actually take on b6. So rook d2 was played. And now if you go f3, king g1, and try to get to white's king, it won't be easy for you. 
But still, F3, I feel like F3 has to be played. Hikaru Nakamura is thinking, and he goes knight, knight c6, getting the knight to d4, knight d5, queen d6. Was possible to actually go to e6, I, I thought. Uh, well, then in this case, it would be knight c7, so queen d6. Feels like Nipomish is in control, and eventually he takes a b a b6. A b6, so queen b6 or knight b6 will mean an extra pawn for Nipomnishi. Although obviously some compensation is still on. Rather tense game, although they are not that visibly nervous as they were as they were during rapid. That that's interesting. So queen b2 retreating the queen. But now with black, you can't really get your queen back that easily. The queen was nicely placed on f6. That would be the moment when Nakamura could play f3, followed by queen e6, queen h3, but he didn't so. Rook b8. Black played rook b8, defending on b6. So b6 is permanently weak, but still it's not falling. Uh -huh, f3 and then h5. So once again, Hikaru is trying to open up the position. Knight c2 and then g4. Yes, rook f1. White is bringing the pieces back. Queen g6, concentrating forces on on a king side, possibly intending h4 and so on. And white queen gets stuck on b2. This is where Nakamura is. Well, I believe he's an expert in this kind of stuff. Semi semi bluffing attacks and so on. So rook f7. 124 for Nakamura, but still, if it comes to, say, simplified but Troyish position, he will not be flagged, I believe. He, he is capable of playing a lot of moves, obviously, with that time. So he's, he, he's going to easily reach move 60, although his position is not that... Well, I mean, it's not that bad, so it's not only about... the not only about getting to move 60, but... Uh -huh, so we are back to see the position. F takes g4, h takes g4. An interesting transformation, and then... White gets to... Oh, uh, well, g4 and... Well, White simply blundered this one, or... So queen g3, king h1. And is it, does it mean that it's safe for Nepomnish? Not quite. Rook g4 and rook h4 is a threat. So you have to you have to defend there. Jan played something, rook h2, and then rook h4, and perpetual is not acceptable for black uh, for white. Just to remind you, and Nakamura seems now he seems relieved. I, I feel like he he spotted at least a perpetual. So Jan makes a move, queen e2, queen e2. Still, it's well. But how about now? How about taking on h2 and taking d3? And that's what Nakamura does, right? Queen d3. Now everything's hanging. e4 is hanging. Knight on c2 uh, needs attention. Well, I don't see the way to use a pin open in h file. Yeah, it seems like it went wrong. It went wrong for Nipomnishi. Well, he's still gonna fight. He's still gonna fight. Obviously. What did he play? He played something. Rook e1, yes, it takes. Queen h5 now, quickly. And knight is getting to e5. Yes, knight e5. And since knight joins the action now, it's going to be really tough for Jan. Yeah, there is no way he can bring, he can bring pieces in. Queen f3. Well, not come, well not, now it's about making... Actually, now it's about, it comes to, to making move... 16 seconds and 14 for Nipomnishi. It's, it's even less time for Nipomnishi. And the, his position is bad, and it, it's even less time for him. Seven seconds only, and still they are not reaching move 60. Well, now it's, decide, it's not about chess anymore. Well, and Hikaru Nakamura, well, he wins. He wins this game with black. Draw was enough, but he wins this game with black to go through.